I've got this really good friend, and we've got a great text thread going over the years, and it's mostly just jabbing at each other and memes and giving each other a hard time about stuff or whatever, you know, like friends do. But I got one the other day from him in the midst of this whole COVID-19 thing that was crazy serious. And it came in and it said something the effect of, do you have anything where you talk about how to prepare for death? I thought about memeing back and then I thought about it a little more. I'm like, he's serious. He's thinking about something that we usually don't think about very much. I mean, I suppose we all think about death in the respect that we vaguely know it's coming and everybody likes to act brave and be like, hey, you know, we're all going to die. But I mean, we don't live like we're all going to die. We live like we're kind of terrified of it. And there are cultures from the past. I read about one. I was reading about a guy named Jonathan Edwards, smart dude, American guy from the early 18th century. And I was struck by how present a reality death was for him and for his family and how many times he had to walk through that horrifying feeling of losing somebody he loved and trying to make sense of that in his own brain, not just in the cosmic sense, but also in the sense of his own mortality. And so they were very in the thick of it with death back then. But we've done a lot of very hard work as a civilization in the 21st century to insulate ourselves from this reality and like put on masks and goofing around with like sexy pirate costumes one time a year for Halloween does not count as meaningfully engaging with death. We don't like to touch it. We don't like to think about it. We like for our dead to be wheeled away from us and then prettied up to make it look like they were alive and fine all along. And now we're just going to put them in a box and put them underground. But they looked fine. Don't put them under there. It's weird how we engage with the thing. And on the one hand, it might be weird how we engage with the thing, death that is, because of all kinds of societal problems, stuff that's wrong with us. And you could opine about how those people are dumb or those people are wrong, but come on, that's a waste of time. I, I think the bigger reason is that death just doesn't compute. I'm so dang used to being alive. All I've ever known is being alive. I don't remember what it was like before I was alive when I was still dead back then. I didn't think about anything. I didn't have any awareness of self. I didn't have five senses to mess with things and feel stuff. And further, think about it. You're a point of view character in this story, right? Everything is perceived through the lenses of your five senses. That metaphor is a little bit stretched because eyes, lenses. You know what I mean, though. And so... As far as we really actually know in terms of the truest sense of, of belief and evidence and empirical data for ourselves, the world only happens through our five senses. Now, of course, it's much bigger than that and everybody else has got th their five senses and they're perceiving it their own way. But I think death doesn't compute because it would be like the end of the story. If a tree falls in the woods, is anybody there to hear it? If I'm not there to see it, did it happen? And I don't think that's self-centered of us. I don't think that's arrogant of us. It's just how we encounter the world. And that stopping is weird. And imagining that that stopped for somebody we care about isn't just weird. It's troubling. And it's a cause for a grief that we can wrap our brains around a little bit. But it's also cause for grief that, again, just doesn't compute. They were here and now they're not here, but like their body's still there, but something about it doesn't work now. And well, I think the confusion of it adds to the grief. And I think that creates a bit of a feedback loop where we're like, oh, that adds to grief and grief makes me want to retreat. And because it's confusing, I'll retreat further. And as a result, I don't think we dig very deep into this very often. And sometimes I say we, and I mean all of you, because I think about things. I don't mean that here. I mean, like, we don't like to touch this thing very much, no matter how brave we seem. So here's the deal. My buddy's thinking about death right now. I care about him. I've got a bunch of other friends who are in our conversations. It becomes clear they're thinking about death right now. I care about them. I am thinking about death right now. Please don't take this to be arrogant, but I care about me. And I've been writing stuff and journaling and putting down notes and thinking about things and reading the Bible and seeking encouragement from friends. But also, I've been around death for a long time. I was a pastor for a long time. I got phone calls when horrible things happened. And it's my job to clumsily and ham-fistedly go to the place where the thing happened and somehow try to help. Not solve it, not fix it, but just be there through the grieving to help. So I'm not a death expert. I have never died myself, but I do own a pair of studded nunchucks and I did work around death for a really long time. So 
I don't know who else you got to talk to about it. And further, I went and Googled this stuff. I was like, well, there's probably like a whole gigantic internet's worth of things about death and everything on the internet. No, no, everything's about estate planning. If you're like how to prepare to die, it's like, well, you're going to want to use your 401k assets and you're going to want to move those to an irrevocable. What? Like, what about my soul? What about the part where the play ends and the perception of the whole going on of things that happens through the lenses of me just ceases to be? What about the moment where my dreams just die and stop? Where does God fit into it and grief and other people? And how do I prepare for that? And how do I live if I really believe that I'm going to die? Don't talk to me about a 401k. Well, we're going to talk about the 401k just a little bit. Here's what I want to do. I'm just going to make a few videos and I don't know how they're going to turn out. I'm going to release them in rapid fashion. I just want to process with you how to prepare for death. Stuff smart people have taught me, stuff that I've read, stuff that I've thought through. And I want to break it down like this. First, I'm going to make a video where we're going to talk about the practical stuff. How to get your house right. Um, I don't know, like your, your money and your passwords and clearing your browser history, which really is probably the main point of all of these videos. Clear your browser history. Wear clean underwear. You might not need anything more from me. But we're going to go through that, the practical stuff. In some detail, I'll point you to some resources as well. The second thing that I think is important in answering the question how to prepare for death is simply getting it right with others. So getting it right with our house, getting our house right, and getting relationships right. Uh, no matter how long you've lived, that's enough time to accumulate some baggage, some wreckage, some regret, some stuff that you need to express thanks for, or grief over, or ask forgiveness for. I just want to talk about how you do it, what it looks like to get that right so that, well, you're ready to die. Now, the third thing that I want to talk about is getting the self ready to die. How to get to a place where you are at peace with this as much as possible in a self-contained manner. Now, ultimately, I don't believe that you can be prepared for death entirely on your own. I think others, I think God, factor into this. And if you neglect those, none of these are going to work on, on their own. But I want to take some time to just talk about the existential side, the soul side of how to get ready for death and how to get yourself ready for death. And the last thing I want to talk about is, I think, pretty obvious, right? I want to talk about God. How to be right with God in the face of death. And there'll be some things there that you expect, and there'll be some things there that I've picked up along the way that I've found helpful and challenging that maybe you won't expect. I think they'll all be useful. I've got maybe one or two little bonus videos on some practical things I might work in there. So that's what we're going to do. They're going to come out fast. You can watch these if you want. If you're like, that's not why I come to this channel. It's ridiculous. I'm not dying. It's fine. You can totally skip it. We can still be friends, and it's going to be cool. And I guess what I'm trying to say is I think it's a valid question that my friend asked. I think it's a valid thing for want, us to want to wrestle through. I think some people have put some really good thought into it, and I want to put it in front of you in a way that's accessible and useful and that maybe actually is helpful. Again, I don't think you're probably going to die right now. I don't think you're probably going to die of COVID-19, but it made you think about it. And once that Pandora's box is open, it's pretty tough to put the lid back on it. So here we are. Might as well think about it. And you know what else? If you picture... The people in your life who you respect the most, the people who you admire the most, the people who you think do life pretty well, do relationships pretty well, bet they all have this one thing in common. Maybe they have multiple things in common, but I bet they have this in common. I bet they all live like they're going to die. I bet they have all thought about death, and I bet in some way the reality of their own mortality is informing how they live, how they treat people, how they prioritize, how they plan how they deal with themselves at the existential soul level, how they deal with the question of God, faith, belief, how much do you have to believe something before you can really move on that or not? They're past that point, and they're living in a different way. And so part of what we're going to do here is take some cues from them and try to emulate stuff that those wiser people, I think, might have figured out before we figured it out. Okay, this might get weird. Never done anything like this before. Well, let's talk about death together over the next few videos, and let's try to find some encouragement and solidarity in it, and ultimately some answers and some hope and some direction in terms of stuff we can do to prepare for death. I'm Matt. This is the 10-Minute Bible Hour. We'll see you soon.